Okay, so we get in the locker room. So, yeah, so Brandon, Brandon come up. You know, he, he. <laughs> let him, let him breathe, let him know. Oh, no. Let him so, know what he did. So, so, <laughs> so Brandon come up, he, he in his towel. And it's like, he, he like, yo, you know, this shit, right? And I'm like, I'm like, you got a towel on, what is you doing? Like, this ain't the right timing for all of that. This fool gonna take off the towel, throw it at me. <laughs> he butt naked, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, bro, I'm like, bro. Nah, bro. Bro, what is you doing? Yeah. Fight to get a meal, yeah. Wrongfully accused, we had to fight to get the pills. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know. Spike, spike your skills, fat. Keep it riding for the fam, you gotta light the wig and wheels straight up. But in the past bag, work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah, and my family needed bread, I had to come correct. That's why I keep airing it out like I just passed gas. Week six parlay, here's the three teams. I am athlete, we, we let everybody pick. It's Dallas at New England, that's a for sure bet. Kansas City at Washington, that's a for sure bet. And Green Bay at Chicago, that's a for sure bet. Any pushback? Green Bay, Chicago, Kansas City, Washington, Dallas, New England, traditional. Definitely. You know, any, any opinions there? No, Good. It's more common sense than anything. That's common sense. Anybody fight bad against that? Just all just... road teams. Yeah. Dallas on the road. Kansas City on the road. Green Bay on the road. Rito, oh, da Dallas at New England. With, with your dude Bill Belichick, he gonna he'll figure out something, right? That's not my guy. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Let's that's not out. my guy. guy. <laughs> no, that's not won. my guy. Y'all won the Super Bowl together. We won. We won Super Bowl 49, but you know. That's not, that's not my guy. Do you shave yeah. your balls? Do you like trim? Whoa. No, like manscape, bro. Here, do you shave your balls since we on this topic? Nah. You don't trim, bro? Nah, but thank yeah, you for you the manscape. Trim. So I feel like, man, we need to shave. I mean, I'd be awkward in the shower. No, I don't know how to really shave. Like, no. that's new to me. Like, so yeah, I'd be in the shower sometimes like this. <laughs> hey, that's, that's rookie How you yeah. shave? You go front to back. You don't, fr like, front to back. Oh, y'all gotta teach me. How do you suggest we teach you? Are you a visual learner? Well, I mean, what, what, what is? Man, how you going too far, man? <laughs> I'm just, you asked us. I'm just making sure I'm not a visual learner. Look at you. Manscaped. Promo code athlete. What's the difference between the two? Why is Rex your guy, Bill, why he ain't your guy? It's just, it's two different coaching philosophies. And, uh, you know, Rex is a little bit more loose. You know, he like dogs. He wants right. you to go out there and play hard, run into a wall. That's fine. But, you know, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, news going on right now with Bill in terms of him and Mr. Kraft, and, and there's a lot of stuff surfacing right now, but at the end of the day, um, the way that he run his ship is a little bit different, but I do give him credit, you know, for, for winning so many Super Bowls and, and, and um, having the longevity to do it. If you look at Tom right now, he's having the best time of his year, of, of his career, because he's in Tampa, he's down there um, having a great time. And, when you play with the New England Patriots, it's a lot of pressure every time you walk in the door because it's a lot of tension. Um, it's a lot of noise going on in the background where how, how the team is ran is uh, it's, it's the unknown. You just don't know. You don't know what Mr. Kraft's doing. You don't know what Bill's doing. Um, you just don't know. And it's a lot of, if you get into the, 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 the flake gate, you know, the spy gate and those things, um, People can look at that as cheating, you know, in a sense. So it's tough. Did, did, did you enjoy your time now? No, I did not. <laughs> bro, you won a damn Super Bowl, yeah, like, bro. Yeah, would well, nah, you do it again? You, you didn't enjoy you know, that time. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for, for the grind and the hustle of winning Super Bowl 49. But, you know, waking up every day and, you know, walking into the, to the facility and having to deal with detention. You know, you see why they, 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 they've been to 10 Super Bowls. You see the hustle and the grind of it. But at the end of the day, 
there's other philosophies to win. And it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, you got 32 teams with 32 coaches. Um, some are, are, are tense. Some uh, look at things another way. And there's different philosophies to win the game. And when you deal, when you deal with the things up there, it's, it's, it's a little bit strenuous. And nobody likes it in the locker room. <laughs> That's nobody. being honest. Nobody. nobody. Nobody likes it. So, but are, are, you, are you substituting, you know, walking in there tense every day, you, you substituting, you know, winning games. And that's what, they, that's what they sell. They sell winning games up there. That's what they do. It works. I only, I only know Cincinnati. Yeah. Obviously, in the way we did things. Obviously, it was a, a much looser environment. Yeah. So I've never been to the Army, never been to the Marines. But if I had to explain to people what it's like to play for the Patriots, it's very militant. That's it. On time, you know, discipline. He has one way of doing things, and his way is always one. So that's what it was. Everybody's expendable, right. except that one chess piece, and that's 12. And I, obviously now, now since 12 has been going, I think, what, two years now, right? right? And we see wherever he goes, they consistently win. Mm -hmm. So now things aren't going as well. So who's the master chess piece at New England? Was it Bill or was it Tom? TB12. Ooh. I would say TB12. That was a steal for Bill Belichick and the Patriots to draft him in the sixth round. Nobody never knew that Tom was going to win these many, uh, these championships. But you got to look at the hustle with Tom. Tom is one of the most competitive, you know, players on that field. It, it, he knows he knows how to move chess pieces on the board. To answer the question, is TB12 100 percent? It's the way that it's the way that he knows how to run that offense in and out. Now, in hindsight, you got to respect Bill as well. It's his, it's his philosophy. It's the way how he wanted to run. How you, how you mean to tell me they, they can drive up and down the field throwing out routes <laughs> in the ball to the backs and be successful doing it? So it, it works. You, you found, the, you found the, the one chess piece. You found the, the franchise guy that is able to do that for you. I believe it's both. I ain't Fred T, 55, 50, I'm 50, 50. For me, it's both of them. Bill found him. Bill was also the one coming at five in the morning and staying till 11 at night, right? Game planning, you know, strategizing. Hey, here's the tendencies of the week, right? Every time this receiver put his right foot up, this was happening. I mean, obviously there was other people involved. So for me, it should have never came to an end until Tom Brady said, you know what? I'm signing my ticket to retirement. Where is we going where is we going to start you know ourselves start really giving the, the players a lot more respect. Mm. You know, we got to go out there every Sunday, every Monday night, every Thursday right. to put on that that uniform and go out there. We we know more things than even some of the coaches. We know more than yes. some of the execs of, of how how you know how to, I can meet Chad by the TV right now in a matter of three seconds. It's, it's angles, it's, it's right. mathematics, it's things that, that we, 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 are, we study body language, we study, we have a doctrine in that, even though we didn't go to, to universities and things and such. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I'm not, I'm not taking no credit from, from Bill Belichick and the coaching staff or whatnot, but there has to be a lot more respect towards you know, the players' craftsmanship of who we are. Right. You know, I don't want to call nobody out, but I played with a bunch of them, and you picked off a bunch of them. Right. I played with a bunch of uh, uh, quarterbacks in Miami. If you give a Chad Henney or a Cleo Lemon or a Gus so Farrar, He said I ain't going to call him out, but then he or, called him out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call these <laughs> out because they ruined my career. I got to want to But you just <laughs> So, no, no, no. I call him out. A Trent Green. Right. All these people, Dante Culpepper and all that. If you give those guys to Bill Belichick, they do not go to 10 Super Bowls. Right. And I think that's what Reed's really saying. Like, you have knowledge, but knowledge has to be translated on the so field. And he Brady was the only one that could translate that on the field, bro. No. Without Tom Brady, Bill Belichick won't be Bill Belichick. Without Bill Belichick, Tom Brady won't be Tom Brady. Tom Brady goes to Philly with Andy Reid. Whoa, 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 whoa. It ain't six Super Bowls. Tom Brady he goes to Philly go. with Andy Reid. He, he wins two Super Bowls, but, probably, maybe. You can't speak hypotheticals when there's a fact on what he just did. Mm -hmm. He left New England, went to Tampa Bay, and did what his first year? He which is unheard of unless you're on a video game. Okay, so, but let's not, let's that's, not, that's let's not forget about who? New system? Ty Bowles. That defense, know. that defense, look what that defense did against Drew Brees. Look what that defense did against Aaron Rodgers. 
Look what that defense did against Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. So there was more to it than just Tom Brady now. That offense didn't get going until week 11, week 12, if we're going to be honest now. So I hear what you're saying as far as he went there and won, but at the end of the day, yeah, he would have won two Super Bowls. Look at the pieces of the New England Patriots every year. Right. Tom was there 20 years, right? Yep. The pieces to that mother puzzle changed consistently year in and year out. Right. What one piece never changed, but they kept winning? Tom. That one piece never changed. That's right. And it always equal winning no matter what the they put around him. Right. So what's the reason for the winning? Because Bill, uh, Bill Belichick oh, smart. No, hey, hey, Reed, 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 hey, Reed, let me go Reed, here. Reed, 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 Reed come in and talk about he won 16 million. What, what, what did he say to you? He said, I'm going to give you 14. No way I'm paying you more than Tom Brady. He know. Bill know what he had. Now, let's get into that, too, Go ahead. Well. Let's get into, into it. Into the contrast. That's why one of the reasons why the, the relationship is, is a little bit severed between Tom and Bill because he's – he actually messed up the market, the quarterback market, in terms of being underpaid. Fact. And he was, he's, he's been pissed off about that for a very long time. So Bill had a cap on him in, ter in terms of him being underpaid. So I thought it was him doing that to be able to put the people around him to make the team better. That wasn't time. Nah. Who was Bill putting around? Randy. What I mean, you, I mean, I mean we got to go, go back. back. You, you can go, go back. back. You can go back. That I mean, was the start of it. Right. right. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead, though. That was the start right. of it. They drafted Gronk. You had Aaron, <coughs> Wes, but you got to go be puppies. Go even, yeah. All puppies. But, but what draft. happened? What happened when Randy said he wanted the ball more? Yeah. He was out of there, and, and that's one of the greatest receivers ever playing the game. Yeah. So you looking at how are you easy? How how is it so much easy for you to just release him and cut him? Because and, that one piece I just talked about, and I just right. said it. Everybody was expendable. Right. Yeah. Everybody. The reason why I had a safety blanket when I went there is because I didn't want, I didn't want Bill to have a lot of control. So I, I made sure, you know, my one year deal was guaranteed. So you gotta, you know, if you're trying to, you know, make the right strategic moves in your career, when you actually going up there, it's, it's a little bit different now. So you gotta be on your P's and Q's if you're gonna, if you're gonna sign so, a deal with the Patriots. You know, going back to when you were first drafted, the chess moves that you made, like LeBron, right? Tom Brady's like, let me, maybe not Tom, strategically move this or do that. Just hearing you talk about that, you know, when you entered the league, you were considered like a mercenary, yeah. right? How did that feel? Because like, even what you just said, like, I, I made sure my one year deal was guaranteed, yeah. right? You always made those moves. Where did right. that come from? Uh, just really knowing my worth, knowing your value. You know, I had, a, you know, I had my agents, I had my team, but um, it's just more so just trying to think outside the box and trying to be innovative as best, best I could. Um, and it took a lot of strategy, you know, and I took a lot of risks. Like, there's no way for me to, you know, go to Tampa Bay. I didn't like, I didn't like going to Tampa, you know, because I knew they played a cover two shell. That's not my... That's not my MO. That's not my forte. That's, I'm, I'm more of an in-your-face, you know, man-to-man -man coverage guy. I was a little, I was a little, you know, my, my emotions was all over the place in terms of, you know, trying to make that transition and knowing going to a team that they play cover two shell. And, you know, ownership is really stuck on um, the Glazer family, they really stuck on, you know, cover two shell because they, won, they, a they won the Super Bowl Chucky, yeah. with, with, with Derrick Brooks and them. Right. Mm -hmm. So I knew I was there just, you know, being leased, you know, and well, I remember... Why did you make that move? It wasn't really my move. It was actually the Jets, the, uh, the New York Jets uh, chess move in, in terms of me, you know, my, I had an ACL. I was just coming off of ACL, so at the end of the day, um, it, it was it was kind of war between me and them at the, at the, at the uh, negotiation table for so the last two. When, when, when did it click? Because because th this whole this whole thing about the strategic moves mm -hmm. and you saying I'm I got to lock in and all. Did you have that out of college? When did it click that this is a business, bro? It's no it's no kid at 18 years old that knows that Tam Tampa runs a two shell and I'm not a cover two cornerback. Like, bro, you let me know if I'm wrong. When did it click that you knew that I can control my career? I was having a conversation with Prime, like probably about three weeks ago. You know, he was just like, look, man, like, I'm proud of you, you know what I'm saying? Because you modeled your game after me. 
you've done so much for me, Prime, in terms of me trying to, it's almost kind of like Kobe trying to be Jordan. And I'm not saying I'm in any of those two, you, <laughs> you know, air, but what I'm trying to say is, you know, I tried to make every move that, some, some of the moves that Prime made, you know, him going to, him going to the 49ers, him going to the Cowboys. So one of my plays was, you know, going to, to uh, New England to win, that. to win it because I knew that was the only chance for me to win it. So what I'm trying to figure out is, were you studying who the GMs were, what their goals were, and how to position yourself that way? I think a lot of players don't really realize that free agency is your best friend. That's where, that's where all the money is. So, yes, we have relationships with certain people, um, but that's built over time. But this is the difference for those that are listening, those that play defensive back. Understanding the skill set and the DNA and the leverage he had to be able to pull that off. Everybody's not built like that or won't have that same mold or DNA to the be leverage, able to pull like off said. the leverage in hidden free agency. Some of those is, is, is built over time. I think Mike Tannenbaum, he used to walk in, in the hallway. So I was that type of person that I would just go say what's up and then just build a relationship over time. Now, is that with every team? No, because when free agent hits, you know, you got to make a move fast. But the leverage comes with that as well. And that's what I was saying, like, to the athletes now today, free, ag free agency is your best friend. You know, you can, you can go in free agency. You know, I know everybody wants to sometimes stay with their hometown team and do this, but free agency is, is where, is where the, uh, the jackpot is. Now, was that your goal? Was your goal to, to build a, a mound of wealth coming into the league, or was it to win a Super Bowl? Was it to be a pro bowler? I mean, did anything stick out further than the other in terms of goals? I don't think I realized that until after I started, we started working on my second deal. One of our, one of our negotiations uh, for my second deal, um, there was no agents and no GM. So we had to do it in the hangar down here at Fort Lauderdale Airport because- Hold on, what you mean there was no agents or, or GM? There was no representation on my end with my agents. And then um, it, was, it was still made it, the negotiation. So, and, and the GM and my agent was button heads. Right. So, you know, we, I had to go, <laughs> I had to meet, you know, uh, Mr. Johnson. And uh, it was me, Mr. Johnson. Um, uh, Rex. <laughs> you talking about you talking about Johnson and Johnson, Mr. Johnson, the, the goals yeah. man. You talking about the goals man. I just gotta make a breeze. Just I need to know that's the Johnson and Johnson. We had to, you know, it was still made it at, at the negotiation table. So we just had to, we had to meet in the hangar, and um, I mean, it was like like you in the movie. D, 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 d real. You backed your private jet up here. <laughs> <laughs> this, I need to say, I, bro, this, this blew my mind. And Mr. Johnson & Johnson, God's man, uh, Vaseline, he backed his plane up here and y'all met in the hangar. I didn't like, I you need to explain that to I me. I wish I had a private jet, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my call. <laughs> it's just me showing up and, and us really hashing the numbers out. In the movie American Made, with Barry Steele, <laughs> they met in the hangar. You remember the hangar with the FBI agent? Yeah. Schroeder? Right. That, movie, no that sound like that. Let's do it, bro. No, that was real life. Chef Lowe. How you doing, brother? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah. So what we got tonight, we got a little Indian cuisine tonight. We're dealing with a tikka masala butter chicken. Oh, with jasmine saffron rice topped with a little coconut, sweet and coconut. It's a representation of what Bermuda's like. So it's a big mixing pot, similar to Miami, and that's the influence for tonight. Is, is this chicken? That's chicken. that's chicken. I need to know that it's, it's like real cluck, cluck chicken. chicken. Yeah. Thank you. Are you Ocho? I'm, I'm not into the, the fake chicken. I but like what, the, are you Ocho or are you science? I mean, the funny thing is, is that I think Ocho is actually more science than science itself because he questions. That's what science is supposed to be, is questioning. Mm. It's not supposed to be authority. And I said this at the jump. I think Ocho <laughs> is actually being more of a scientist than a lot of people who 
believe in so science. So you approve You're of this donut? Do you approve of this Krispy Kreme donut that he had right now? You approve of that? Your science? That see, but that's not science is questioning. Okay. Science isn't a, a mode of being. Okay. Right? It's questioning. He questions. So I guess what I'm saying is, is that whether we're talking about milk, right, or whether we're talking about fake meat, right, there's still a lot of marketing pushing behind either one. Right. One hundred percent. Milk ain't good for you. I mean, you tell me. When you when you when you, when you drink milk, do you get the bubbly guts? No. When I was young, tell in me. junior high, right? Tell me. You know, you get a little lunch at tater tots. Mm -hmm. You get the milk mm -hmm. and a little square pizza, a rectangle pizza. Right. And you say, drink your milk, it's good for your bones. Right. You ever broke a bone? I have. I haven't. I've never been hurt. You different. You know why? Because I drink my milk. Well, Ocho, milk, milk, God made milk for baby cows. Are you a baby cow? No, you're not. You're not a baby <laughs> cow. He got a baby on the way, right? So, your baby, your young Ochalita. Ochata. Ochata. <laughs> Ochata. Is gonna drink the milk from her mother? No. No. She's not. No. Out the womb, she's drinking. She's drinking baby. She's the drinking baby cow milk. My other eighty-five kids had baby cow milk. What's your okay. what's your what's your thoughts on on uh, how we approach our plate, how we approach food? You know, you had your own experience around. I want to make money off of it. It's the same reason why, I like capitalism. You know, the same thing, the same price for insulin, yeah. the same price of a burger is the same, but insulin costs a lot more. You, 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 you don't get it? You don't get how backwards that is? We care about health and everybody living right. and eating right. So if you, go, if you go to Asia, let's go to, the, let's go to the Asia, let's go to Why the islands. Why are you speaking hypothetically? I'm not no. going to Asia. I don't have a passport. We're talking about capitalism. <laughs> well, you ain't got a passport. You got a passport. I'm on probation. No, no, no. You ain't no, no damn with probation. Me. Bottom line is money. Facts. That's Facts. it. Facts. That's what it's always been. That's right. And everything. That's right. They don't really give a f That's about right. eating healthy. I gotta ask Reva something because you talked about Prime. Prime and sorry, B, I gotta give Ocho a little bit more love. They marketed themselves. Ocho with the with the Hall of Fame jacket, with the all the stuff he did, he marketed himself. Right. I I don't wanna say you were Prime. Well, bro, it was about a five-year period when I was in the league mm -hmm. that quarterbacks didn't look your way because you have marketed yourself better. Mm -hmm. Today, you got kids and all that. Do you think you marketed yourself correctly when you were the top dog in the league? I think I tried to do the best I, I could, but playing in the market in New York City, it, it helps, you know. Um, I just <laughs> tried to do the best I could. You know what I, what what I could, and and one of the things was was Revis Island. So um, that caught on, and it just took off. It's almost like you in Gotham City, but you know if if I'm the superhero of Gotham City, any receiver coming in town, so I got to So why did you dance one. though? But he sh you should have danced, bro. You should have done something. Island. No, I'm not. A, I'm not a great dancer. Not a dance, but just something like, <laughs> but like you were saying. I, I believe, I believe personally, you could have capitalized on Reefus Island, bro. You could have drawn, you could have had, you could have had wrist tape that had an island on it that said Reefus. Like you could have. <laughs> but, but Ocho, think about that. If you walk, if you walk out there and on both his wrist tapes, he got, he got a circle that say Reefus on it, and you line up in front of it. He, he was in the New York market. It's the biggest market in football. So he really didn't have to do much. He didn't have to do much. Just ball. Just ball, and that's all that's he, what did. he did. Ball. Sound like a creative player, man. Wrist tape. <laughs> <laughs> wrist tape all the way to the No. You came up with the name? It was in an interview. So I just, I, I kind of said, like, you know, I feel like I'm on the island. And then it kind of like, you know, New York Times, they took. Co correct. Yeah, they took Front off page. with it, all that stuff. So it kind of, it kind of like sprouted that way. Right. And it worked that way. So. Right. Yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot of people that try to become that. Um, Josh Norman, Richard Sherman, even Jalen. Jalen is kind of just built like that. He, he, that's just who he is, mm -hmm. on the field, off the field. But those dudes had to curate their image outside of Jalen, because I truly believe that's who Jalen is, even like Richard Sherman. But like the talk, I got to build my brand, I got to do this. Opposite was you just went out there and balled, right? In the biggest media market, and it kind of morphed into itself. That's all you had to do. And both of y'all know he balled because he locked he locked both of y'all down. Think, well, let's talk about it. I think it's different. E even that, I know we play around about getting shut down. You pick whatever, but I don't think people 
at home and this is the first time we've been together and I get to talk about it. That 2009 season, do I got chills. That 2009 season will never, ever, ever be replicated. That's impossible. Me, zero. And anyway, I got my cleats with me too because I want my back. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Smith, T.O. Right. twice. Calvin Johnson. Was it Randy Moss too? Randy Moss twice. I don't think you was that prepared that game. No. Oh. How you doing? Oh. oh! I just really don't. I don't think you was prepared. Wait, brother. which one? The first one or the second one? Both. The first one, I slipped in the ice over there. That was some bull. Y'all don't have no heaters, all that money y'all got? <laughs> Underneath the field? Oh, Joe, you seem like you making excuses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Reese really seemed like he just locked, he, he just choked your ass to death. Nah, I, it, it wasn't none of that. Pass it just yeah, yeah, Did that, you choke him to death? <laughs> No, I don't like to. I don't, I don't like. I don't like to get tough. I don't like to get tough. You one of the best route runners I ever covered. I studied you. I yeah. studied you a while. For, I tried for, to for study years. too. It ain't work though. <laughs> sometimes you study for your test in life, and sometimes no matter how much you study, you fail. So what you gonna do? This is what happened in my SAT. That's why I went to Lexington. <laughs> so I went back and took the SAT again. Let me go watch this motherfucker again. I got. This. We go out there, playoff game. Oh, I got this now. We <laughs> back the third quarter. I'm over there in Carson. Man, what's up, man? <laughs> Threw me the ball. Intercepted. God damn! <laughs> like nothing went right, and this is that is just one of those moments and one of those players where no matter what you do, right, it just don't go right. But it, I, it, but I've been I've been studying you way before that. Remember, it was an off season, and I asked you. I said, you drink? You said, nah, man. But you were smoking on a cigar. Always. But uh, I jot all that down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying that affected your game on Sunday, but I'm, 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 I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes on everything. <laughs> yeah, he, cheated. he cheated, man. Uh -oh. But I feel like before we, before, we, before we move on, though, I feel like <clears throat> whether you're playing against the Patriots or you're playing against individual, you have an individual matchup, you're playing against greats, so you go into the game thinking like, man, I gotta, I gotta really bring it, and you do a lot, and that's what happens, right? I feel like you psych yourself out oh, at, oh, no. when you go against uh, those teams. Did I, those did I teams. talk? I don't think so. Was I talking normal? You know, I think you said something to me one time like, "What did you eat for breakfast or something?" I sure did. I was just and I kind of looked at you like, "What?" Because like, I know. needed you to answer back to throw you off your game just a little bit, just to I get you to converse, but it didn't work. It ain't work. Nothing. None of the mental gymnastics, none of the games that I wanted to play, worked. But he got to you, but but. But him? What about him? him? We so, were teammates. Yeah. Channing, we were teammates, and I think he was one of the hardest receivers I, I ever had to cover because of his size and his speed. Yeah. And um, super intelligent too, as well. So uh, I just had a hard time with trying to, you know, get through his big body if if he was running a slant because he would just box you out and actually try to, you know, catch the ball but, and but, but I heard you checked his ass early. <laughs> hey, we talk about a battle, you talk about competition. Like, I mean, this was legendary. This was practice. Yeah. Right? I'm in the prime of my career, he coming off a Super Bowl, and every time we do one-on-one, he will only come up really against me and maybe one other receiver, that's it. Bro, we do one-on-ones in camp, all the cameras out, everybody's around, it's a show. And one day, he banged up, something's bothering him. And I'm kind of getting the best of him a little bit. Facts. Right? He get hot. Cause I'm, but I got respect for him because of everything. Like, I was on that list, too. So every day I'm in practice, every day I'm in practice, all I'm thinking about is what he did to me when I was going against him on Sundays. <laughs> every day. Like, we got to get it. If I can't get it as a, you know what I mean? We're going to get it on this practice field. <laughs> right? He chilling, though. We go out there, and I, and I, and I route him up. Right? And I go back because I have respect for him. Like, he, 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 I got you on that one, dog. But out of love, like, just me and him. The very next play, I line up. Sit, hut, 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 hut. He just, he ain't move. He just slapped me in my head. Bam! <laughs> Bro, I'm running. I'm, I, I'm literally running down the field. The ball's thrown. I'm just like, my helmet sideways. I'm like, I think I got a concussion. Bro, after that, I'm talking about for the next two hours, all we did was fought. He was determined. He was determined that day. Like he was like, I'm, we going no, no, no. that, whatever, right? We we talking trash out of the huddle, like in the huddle, out of the huddle. 
So I'm like, I'm, I'm telling the other corner, look, I got him. You following yeah, him? Yeah, I'm following him in practice. practice. Yeah, I'm in practice, right? I'm like, I don't even be doing that. You be chilling. So I'm like, I'm, so he like, no, nah, come on, line up. Bring. So we going at it, left and right. And, uh, you know, his, his wife was there too. It was, it was fan day. So it, it was a lot going on. It was a lot of tension. And uh, he got me. He got me on. He got me on. Uh, it was only a couple routes. No, no. You took it. You took it to the house. The one where you you ran out and then you came, slipped back inside. Right. On like a like a post. It was nice. It was nice. He got me, and then he ran it all the way in. So I was like, okay. It's, I took the L for the day. I took the L for this. And and I want to add some on to to our battle we had because you know we we from we from the we from the 412 we from Pittsburgh and forgiveness can be you know uh, an antidote you know the clearest smoke right and you know man as a brother man I just want to say you know I didn't handle that in the best situation right. you know and I you know I apologize to that you on here man that you approached me another way and how how, how it gone right it, it was more so of me being, you know, super competitive. Uh, it was, it was, it was, it was good to finally, you know, have people come to New York and actually want to play in New York City right. because it was, it was some tough times, man. We wasn't, we wasn't always the best. We and, and we was barely uh, scratching the surface of 500. So, right. uh, you know, for me, man, it, it was a lot of pressure on me. You know, what I'm saying of always trying to. Even the organization, you know, put, hey, you gotta, you gotta shut Brandon Marshall down or we gonna lose. And it's like, come on, man. You double him or something or do something else. Yeah. Don't, because last, it's gonna take years off my body. Right, right. Right. But that really hurt our relationship that day. It did, it did. You know what I mean? And, and so like years went by and we never talked. And then we ran into each other like, yo, what's up? What's going on? And it was, you know what I mean? We never really talked about it. So I appreciate that. Now I apologize. Well, you want to talk about the locker room? Go ahead, talk about the locker room. I ain't trying to be. Oh, there you go. Look, he said, I come he in, said you was a problem. I come, in, just... I come in, I take a shower. Hold on. You making all these chips with I am podcast? You doing your thing, right? <laughs> Let me tell the story. <laughs> okay, so we get in the locker room. So we, I'm at my, you know, you're at your locker, thinking about to get in the shower, figure it out. So the PR comes up and they like, they like, yo, Brandon just got done speaking to the media. They want to talk to you about the battle and what happened. I'm like, for what? I'm like, what for? Like, you know, it, it, it was practice. Like, it's been a million fights out here. Like, what, like, what's up with this one? So I go out there and do it. I come back in. So Brandon, Brandon come up. You know, he, he. <laughs> Let him, let him breathe. Let him Hold know. On. Let him so, know what he did. So, so, <laughs> so, Brad come up. He he in his towel, and it's like he he like yo, you know, good shit, right? And I'm like I'm like, you got a towel on? What is you doing? Like, this ain't the right timing for all of that. So I'm like, so I kind of brushed it out. Like, nah, nah, nah. Like. <laughs> Bruh, that's not what he said. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Mm, kind of. Yeah. This fool gonna take off the towel, <laughs> throw it at me. <laughs> he butt naked? Man, yeah, and I'm like, bruh, I'm like, bruh. <laughs> nah, bruh. Bruh, what is you doing? So, <laughs> so somebody grabbed him. Yeah, you know, yeah, they did. No, no, it wasn't that like that. Somebody grabbed him, somebody stepped in front of me. Yeah. Just for, so we couldn't, it, you know, it wasn't no, fight, no scrap. But I'm like, bro, <laughs> see, what I'm, see what I'm saying? He was fighting naked. No. Fair, look. <laughs> bro, no, can I Fair. tell my side he of the story? He hey, took please. the towel. Can I tell my side <laughs> of the story? <laughs> so, listen, I have two, two towels on. Toka shower. Who boom, take, boom. Who puts two towels on? Boom, boom, and I have one over my shoulder, right? That's how, because when I get to my locker, I put that one down, put my feet on it, right? I'm rocking and rolling. So I walk up to Reeve with one towel on my waist, yeah. one towel over my shoulder. I walk up to him like, bro, you know, it's all love, bro. Res you know, I respect you. So I do that to Reeve, and this is what Reeve did to me. He went like this. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like this is what Reeve did to me. You gave me Diane. Bro, no, I didn't do that. that. I just said. <laughs> no, I said, damn, come over there trying to, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's love. That's what you, how you going to treat me? That's what happened. And so did, that, did that, you, okay, did, but, but then he pulled as he back, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the story. No. 
No, bro. When the I towel off my shoulder, bro. You get the hey. towel? Yeah, yeah. Pause. Yeah. Pause. Pause, pause, bro. You got to throw that one out of me. Shit, pause. And pull the out on him. Pause. How y'all was doing it in New York? And here y'all got going on in the Big Apple, man. The Big Apple. In this debate, who's your ex? Who's your ex? Who's your ex? Who's your ex? In this debate, who's your ex? Who's your Z? You talked about he's the best route runner. You said I was one of the toughest Well, then receivers. obviously that answers your question right there. Okay, let's let him talk about it. I'm just Be saying. real, though. Let's end this debate. Who, who the dog? That's all you need to say. Who would you rather not cover when the game's on the line? Who would I rather not? Not cover. Who is, who, who is the bitch out of them two? Who's the <laughs> End it, bro. You follow Brandon around, right? If they were on the same team, who the fuck would you follow around? Oh, that's a good question. There, there you go. Nice. There you go. That's a good question. Who would you follow? The dog, the big dog. Mm, I probably follow. I probably follow Chad. And you know what's gonna happen this time? The third time, I'm gonna beat. It's Bruh. on. Third. Time. Listen. Bruh. Let me tell you. What I happened. had a better game against huh? you than you. What? Than him. That had nothing to do no with disrespect, it. No, that's brother. disrespect, hey. bro. You crushed me, bro. Wait, no. This Stop. Was, this was, this was. Let me ask you a question. Let me tell you what would happen. I got to get this off my chest. <laughs> no, it's over with. Leave me alone. This is my time. If we were to meet for a third time, three times is a charm. That's what my mama said. And when you stop me, those other two, she ain't talked to me for like a month. Really? I got my cleats upstairs. Mm. It's grass field outside. I just want one release. Mm. Just one. Oh, yeah. I, I need some type of redemption. I just need something good. I just want to feel good about myself because I've been in this hole for a decade. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, you still on the island? F you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to, I'm glad you're here. I can tell you in person, it was a pleasure playing you. You are the best mm. corner because people continue to ask me. He's the best corner I've ever faced and I haven't recovered. <laughs> you have zero. PTSD. You see it? Right. Zoom in so you can see the tears coming. Because <laughs> I've been working on this. Okay. Need some tissue? You I feel good. I feel you better. Because I've been right. able to get, I've been holding this in. And we talk about mental health all the time. Right. It has been wearing on me. This is good. I think that's your hug, out. bro. Yeah. I respect, I respect, go, I respect both of them. Yeah, we, 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 no, 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 no handshake up. hug, not like a yeah. man. No, that's what men do. Like, dude, like, for we don't hug. Bro, we don't never hug the way, he like, y'all are both <laughs> in Revis's mind. Nah. He bit everybody. He bit y'all for years. He don't want to hug y'all. Hey, hey. Can y'all get pregnant? Reeve, you want to you make a baby with them? Nah, bro. I passed. You made a baby with them for 10 years? All the things. I passed, I passed. How long you been retired? Three years now. Three years, so you got two more years. Are you first ballot? Man, boy, y'all put me on the hot first dollar. Right. Ain't nothing hot about it. That's right. You want me pull it, you want me pull the stats out? How you feel about that? That talk, right? You know, put together my resume. I, I mean, I think it speaks for itself. Thanks. You know, and at the end of the day, I can't just I can't take all the credit for it. You know, I played in Rex's defense. I played in Ty Bowles' defense. I played in some you know some great schemes. I just don't want y'all to think that it wasn't a challenge for me. You know, I think. For me, I was battling something even even bigger of, of trying to just, you know, be the best I can be. And with the with a short period of time that I had, you know, I kind of knew that and I was told that, you know, if I'm going to try to measure myself up to prime or, you know, certain other legends that is a whole different sacrifice. You've been away from the game for three years. Um, how's the transition been for you? A lot of guys, right? Uh, struggle right to right. redefine themselves or to figure out who they are outside of the game the transition was tough for me to be honest like um, you know I was diagnosed with PTSD so uh, there's a lot of things you know there's a lot of things I didn't do that I'm that I'm actually partaking in now just for from the mental health standpoint you know um, you know I'm partaking in you know uh, you know marijuana certain things that um, you know, you deal with, with chronic pain, um, you know, other things that, uh, I'm taking mushroom gummies, I'm trying this thing out where there's, there's um, it's called Lion's Man, the mushroom. 
So it, it's just something that, um, you know, research and studying it, and uh, it does wonders. You know, it does, it clears, it clears brain fog, it clears certain things. I take Lion's Mane before every show. You do? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, I take, yeah, I take Lion's Mane before every show. And I, but I guess as a part of that, like that's a, that's a big question of mine right. for a lot of guys. What, what was the diagnosis of PTSD? Was that from the transition of football? Was that from something else outside of football? Was that relational? What, where, where does that diagnosis come from? And, and how do you diagnose something like PTSD? I mean, to be honest, I think, you know, from speaking to my doctors, um, it, it could kind of get in the, your doctor can kind of get into therapist too because they try to dig deep on trauma as well, you know, childhood trauma, uh, you know, things that, you know, you grew up dealing with that um, still lingers, it still hangs with you. And, you know, I, I think we don't realize that enough that we do deal with a lot. It, it, it's kind of like we was, we, like you built to, like we were built for tough. Like you, you're not supposed to speak up. And, and, and it's kind of like the LeBron thing, shut up and, 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 and dribble. You know, you can use the same slogan for shut up and play football. Right. And I think guys is being a little bit more vocal now about the things that we deal with because you consider soft if you speak up about, you know, things you deal with internally. So I think for the most part, the more guys speak up on, on these type of issues, and, and we talked about it even off camera before we got on about how impactful that was, you know, for you to speak up about your, your mental situation and, you know, being on the podium at, at Miami and speaking up. And I think you were so far ahead of, ahead of your time where you woke a lot of people up, you know what I'm saying, to be honest. So um, I think that's where we are today in sports, where people are, are being more, um, you know, aware of the mental health aspect. And it does affect us, man. There's so much pressure, man, to, to go out and run through that tunnel and to actually, you know, hey, you, you playing against 85,000 people, and if you don't score a touchdown or make an interception, they don't see the inside, you know, of what we got to deal with when we deal with the coaches and things like that. But the pressure of it itself is, is, is strenuous. It's a lot, you know what I'm saying? And you got to look over your shoulder to know you're going to get released next year or those things or not. So I, I think for the most part, um, you know, I just telling you like childhood trauma, it can be a lot of things that you just dealt with through your life that it just, it hangs with you. You know, when you think about, you know, illness, you think about sickness, you think about segmenting it out, you think about communities and uh, mental health, it touch everyone. I mean, we, we joked about your career earnings earlier, but you made a lot of money. You're talking about Revis Island, being in the biggest media market in the world, like everybody knew who you were, like not just a football player, celebrity, right. famous. Um, and for you to be sitting here today saying like, no, I, this is what I deal with, this is what I live with, right? Um, I think that says a lot, you know, how important this conversation is. Yeah. And I think with him saying something, it opened up the door even more. I know we do it, we always have the mental check-ins, but to have someone like this, this is that, this is, one of, if not the best DV to ever play, to sit up here and say, and be in a vulnerable state, I got PTSD. I got issues too, yep. you know? And it's going, it's going to help other people be able to say, Vivas could do it, I can. Right. And at, at, it's gotten to a point where you guys always talk to now, I want something to say, mm. you know? I want a problem too. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, like, I'm at the point, bro. I want something. No, I, I ain't going. I want something wrong with me, so I can sit up here and. But but and have but maybe about. maybe there's something that is wrong with you, and maybe you're masking some pain. Like I want to open up and, and I want to be able to share some too. Brandon, something you you've highlighted multiple times, and, and that I I guess I'll shamelessly plug is that, you know, for the past four years I've been making a documentary about CTE. A part of me going to ask these doctors about that. Um, I also went to go ask an anthropologist named Sebastian Younger, who was a wartime journalist. So he went to war in Afghanistan. And I asked him because I read his book called Tribe. And one of the things that he said in his book, because he got a lot of backlash for him trying to redefine what he believed PTSD to be. Because what he believed it to be was not what happened to you at war. 
but it was the return back to what he called a fractured and soulless society that we can wake up every day after war, we can get paid, we can eat food, we can drink wine, we can do all of these things, we can have nice things, but it doesn't feel like we even deserve it simply because we're not at war anymore, that we actually miss the communal feeling of being at war, that, that what PTSD is, is a healthy reaction to just being a guy. Yeah. It's a healthy reaction to leaving something that feels genuine. Now, football is not war, right? But it's a representation of war. But the thing is, is that it's real to us. Our ACLs tear. My leg is broken twice. We've had concussions. There's plenty of things at risk. So then when we leave that risk and that risk is no longer in our life, there's something missing. There's something missing that we're not putting up at risk every day. And what he said was Sebastian Younger, uh, a, a, a nominated uh, documentarian and wartime journalist, he felt that PTSD was actually a healthy reaction to coming back to men not having to do anything right and having nothing meaningful in society and that we can play video games and be applauded i, I agree with everything you're saying i'm, I'm actually happy that i'm not playing <laughs> the, the game of football no more i'm a lover of the sport i love the game but um just to do something else to th have your thoughts on other things out here in life is is more rewarding than anything instead of sitting here and prepping to get ready for chad or prepping to get ready for him, you think I, this guy is seven inches taller than me? Do you think I really want to <laughs> engage him play by play and, and follow him around uh, the field? No, I do not, but I'm prepped to do it. I'm one of the best in, in my position. He's one of the best in his, and this is what we got to do for the time being because we're under a contract that we signed. But I think that's, uh, that, that implies growth, right. right? I think that's exactly what that is, is that you wanting to do that for a certain amount of time, that shine wears off. And so I think, you know, I commend you on recognizing that because sometimes when people do have troubles with PTSD, it's almost as if they're recognizing that they need to get out, that they need to move on, that they need something else to give meaning to their life. So I commend you for that. Uh, much respect, much respect. I mean, for everybody out there, you know, we always have these conversations on the show about mental health, check in with your people, where you at professionally, a mental fitness level, and also personally, it's a it's a important conversation, and uh, I really appreciate you coming on. For sure, man. Appreciate. You know, really ending this conversation is debate around, you know, who's the X, who's the Z. You know, I appreciate <laughs> you showing love to me. I'm who, the X. Who do you say the X was? Ocho's the Z. Who did you say the X? He said I was the X. No, he did not. Oh, well, we got Pac-Man Jones coming <laughs> on soon. So <laughs> <laughs> it's in one of the y'all be me. <laughs> it ain't never ended. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's dope, bro. Yeah. Dope, that dope. was good. Remember, we was in, uh, we was playing here. We was playing in Miami, yeah. and you ran that seven route, and I grabbed your your, your, your wrist, and right. you couldn't get your hand. <laughs> <laughs> and you looked at the ref and was like, come on, man. So uh, savvy. Tricks of the trade. Dog, wait, stand up. Where the camera at? Let me show y'all. Let me show Listen to the people at home. All right, go. Let me show you why readings was great, right? So at the line, right, the snap of the ball, normally, common sense, the DB always goes for the second move. But this had the patience of Sally Mae. He didn't go nowhere. And then whichever side you chose to go, just go, go out that way. He had an arm bar. He was strong, right? He hit that right here. Right here. <laughs> Ain't nothing going on. Lock you up. Remember that shit? For sure. Lock man, you just up. like this. Look, look at the little trick. See? <laughs> Y'all, man, watch. I've been, I tried. It ain't work. Much love. Appreciate you. I need one back. Baby, get my cleats. We had to fight to get a meal. Yeah, wrongfully accused. We had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know. Spike your skills. Fat. Keep it riding for the fam. You gotta like the we get wheels straight up. But in the past bad, work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah, and my family needed bread. I had to come correct. That's why I keep airing it out like I just passed gas. Oh yeah, it started from the bottom, but we made the top.